friends, Miss Danny from the Pleasant Hills Public Library, and I'd like to welcome you to Tuesday Tales. Now this week we are celebrating Banned Books Week. Do you know what a banned book is? No? A banned book is a book that somebody somewhere took issue with. They challenged it and asked a librarian to remove it from the collection. Now librarians and libraries don't like to censor books. We believe in your freedom to choose what you read. You should be able to read whatever you want to read. And so this week we are celebrating books that we think are worthwhile, but somebody somewhere didn't like. You should read the books and then make the decision for yourself. Now, before we can get to our story time today, let's start with our hello song. Are you ready to sing and wave? Hello, everybody, and how are you? How are you? How are you? Hello, everybody, and how are you? How are you today? Very good. Let's clap our hands. Hello, everybody, and clap your hands. Clap your hands. Clap your hands. Hello, everybody, and clap your hands. Clap your hands today. Terrific, let's stomp those feet. Hello, everybody, and stomp your feet. Stomp your feet. Stomp your feet. Hello, everybody, and stomp your feet. Stomp your feet today. Very good. Now. Let's try stomping our feet super fast. Are you ready? Let's do it on the count of three. One, two, three, fast! Whoa, freeze, that was crazy fast. Now, let's try the opposite. What is the opposite of fast? Oh, oh. Monkey says slow, so let's go super slowly. Very good. And now let's try big and loud. You ready? So last time we counted up to three. This time let's count down from three. Three, two, one. Big and loud! Whoa! Freeze. That was crazy big and crazy loud. So now let's do the opposite. Do you know the opposite, Mr. Mikey? Mm, he says small and Let's do some tiptoe stomping. Very good. So before we hear our first story today, let's learn a little bit more about some of my favorite banned books. Books are considered banned when someone has filed a complaint about them and the library or the school has removed it from the collection. Sometimes these complaints are founded and sometimes they're not. It's best to read the book yourself to make up your mind before deciding if it's right. I'd like to talk just real quickly about some of my favorite books that were once banned. If you'd like to check out any of these books, you can do that using our curbside pickup service. You can give us a call at 412-655-2424 send us an email to pleasanthills at einetwork.net or reach out to us on social media. My favorite picture book that's been banned is Sylvester and the Magic Pebble, written and illustrated by William Steig. In this book, Sylvester finds a magic pebble that turns him into a rock. How will he get back to being a donkey? This is Draw Me a Star by Eric Carl. Some people didn't care for the generic abstract nudity in it, and that's why it got banned. But it has some beautiful illustrations. If you like funny books, you'll enjoy this one. This is It's a Book, written and illustrated by Lane Smith. It uses a more older term for donkeys that some people objected to, and that's why it got banned. This is an oldie but a goodie, The Story of Ferdinand, written by Myrna Leaf and illustrated by Robert Lawson. Some people didn't care for the pacifist nature of Ferdinand, and that's why this book got banned. 
but it's a classic for a reason, and you should check it out. In the Night Kitchen by Maurice Sendak was also banned for some abstract nudity, but it's a really fun, imaginative story that I think you would enjoy. This picture book is perhaps the most challenged and most banned book in history. This is Anne Tango Makes Three, written by Justin Richardson and Peter Parnell, and illustrated by Henry Cole, and read today with permission of Simon & Schuster Publishing. What makes this book extra special is that it's based on a true story. Are you ready? In the middle of New York City, there's a great big park called Central Park. Children love to play there. It has a toy boat pond where they can sail their boats. It has a carousel to ride on in the summer and an ice rink to skate on in the winter. But best of all, it has its very own zoo. And every day, families of all kinds go to visit the animals that live there. But children and their parents aren't the only families at the zoo. The animals make families of their own. There are red panda bear families with mothers and fathers and furry red panda bear cubs. There are monkey dads and monkey moms raising noisy monkey babies. There are toad families and toucan families and cotton top tamarind families too. And in the penguin house, there are penguin families. Every year at the very same time, the girl penguins start noticing the boy penguins and the boy penguins start noticing the girls. When the right girl and the right boy find each other, they become a couple. Two penguins in the penguin house were a little bit different. One was named Roy and the other was named Silo. Roy and Silo were both boys, but they did everything together. They bowed to each other and walked together. They sang to each other and swam together. Wherever Roy went, Silo went too. They didn't spend much time with the girl penguins and the girl penguins didn't spend much time with them. Instead, Roy and Silo wound their necks around each other. Their keeper, Mr. Gramsey, noticed the two penguins and thought to himself, hmm, they must be in love. Roy and Silo watched how the other penguins made a home, so they built a nest of stones for themselves. Every night, Roy and Silo slept there together, just like the other penguin couples. And every morning, Roy and Silo woke up together. But one day, Roy and Silo saw that the other couples could do something they could not. The mama penguin would lay an egg, and she and the papa penguin would take turns keeping the egg warm until finally it would hatch. And then there would be a baby penguin. Roy and Silo had no egg to sit on and keep warm. They had no baby chick to feed and cuddle and love. Their nest was nice, but it was a little empty. One day, Roy found something that looked like what the other penguins were hatching, and he brought it to their nest. It was only a rock, but Silo carefully sat on it and, and sat and sat. And when Silo got sleepy, he slept. And when Silo was done sleeping and sitting, he swam and Roy sat. Day after day, Silo and Roy sat on the rock, but nothing happened. Then Mr. Gramsey got an idea. He found an egg that needed to be cared for and he brought it to Roy and Silo's nest. Roy and Silo knew just what to do. They moved the egg to the center of their nest and every day they turned it so each side stayed warm. Some days Roy sat while Silo went for food and other days it was Silo's turn to take care of the egg. They sat in the morning and they sat at night. They sat through lunchtime and swim time and supper. They sat at the beginning of the month and they sat at the end of the month and they sat all of the days in between. until one day they heard a sound coming from inside their egg. Peep, 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 it said. Roy and Silo called back, squawk, squawk. Peep, peep, answered the egg. 
and suddenly a tiny hole appeared in the eggshell. And then, crack, out came their very own baby. She had fuzzy white feathers and a funny black beak. Now Roy and Silo were fathers. We'll call her Tango, Mr. Gramsci decided, because it takes two to tango. Roy and Silo taught Tango how to sing with them when she was hungry. They fed her food from their beaks and they snuggled her in their nest at night. Tango was the very first penguin in the zoo to have two daddies. Soon Tango grew strong enough to leave the nest. Roy and Silo took her for a swim, just like all the other penguin families. And all the children who came to the zoo could see Tango and her two fathers playing in the penguin house with the other penguins. Hooray, Roy! Hooray, Silo! Welcome, Tango! They cheered. At night, the three penguins returned to their nest. There they snuggled together, and like all the other penguins in the penguin house, and all the other animals in the zoo, and all the families in the big city around them, they went to sleep. And now we'll sing one of my favorite songs about penguins, The Penguin Went Over the Iceberg, that goes to the tune of The Bear Went Over the Mountain. Are you ready, friends? The penguin went over the iceberg, the penguin went over the iceberg, the penguin went over the iceberg to see what he could see, and all that he could see, and all that he could see was the other side of the iceberg, the other side of the iceberg, the other side of the iceberg was all that he could see. Yay! Yay! Another favorite picture book of mine that has been banned and challenged in the past. This is The Sissy Duckling, written by Harvey Fierstein and illustrated by Henry Cole, and read today with permission of Simon & Schuster Publishing. Hmm, what's he doing? Elmer was the happiest duckling in the whole forest. He loved to build things and paint pictures and play make-believe. He also enjoyed helping around the house and was especially fond of decorating cookies. Yes, Elmer was one happy duckling doing all the things he loved to do. Unfortunately, there wasn't a single other little boy duckling who liked to do any of that stuff that Elmer did. Not one. They boxed when Elmer baked, and when they built forts, Elmer made sandcastles. They had a football game, and Elmer put on a puppet show. Sometimes Elmer played with the girls, but most of the time, he played alone. You'll never get along in the world if you don't learn to play with others, Papa Duck told his son. It's time for you to learn to play baseball. How about I put on a halftime show instead, offered Elmer. Papa Duck just shook his head. Well, what's the point, Elmer asked. I, I can't catch and I, I can't throw. Well, you don't have to catch or throw, just hit the ball, said Papa, plunking a batting helmet onto Elmer's little head. Oh, this is going to be a disaster, thought Elmer as the first pitch streaked past his beak. Batter can hit, batter can hit, chanted the catcher. Elmer snapped back. Do I point out your shortcomings? <laughs> as the second pitch whizzed past his bat. The umper, umpire called strike two. Swing, hollered Papa, swing! And another pitch flew right into the catcher's glove. Strike three, called the umpire. You're out. Really? I'm all done? Elmer asked, tossing aside his helmet and bat. Well, thanks for a swell time, fellas, he announced. See you in postseason. And then, to the amazement of all, he skipped merrily away. Elmer was getting ready for bed when he heard his papa shouting in the living room. Sissy! They all called him Sissy! Now I'm the laughingstock of the whole flock! When Mama came to tuck Elmer into bed, it took all of his courage to ask her, What's a sissy? Mama sat down next to him and explained, Sissy is a cruel way of saying that you don't do things the way others think you should. What? How do they want me to do things? 
people just like they do, Mama said with a smile. But you are special, Elmer, and being special sometimes scares those who are not. I don't want to be special, Elmer quietly confessed. But you are, said Mama, holding Elmer close, and one day you will amaze us all. Elmer arrived at school the next morning to find big bully Drake Duckling blocking the path. No sissies allowed in my school, Drake squawked. Elmer's face faced him down bill to bill. You're just angry because I do things differently, but one day I will amaze you all. Who fed you that line, Drake chuckled. Elmer bellowed back, my mama. Oh, what a sissy. Drake hollered, and the other ducklings joined in teasing Elmer until Mrs. Honeypecker appeared at the door. I heard that, announced their teacher, and you'll all stay after class until you learn to get along. The ducklings grumbled and mumbled and waddled into the old schoolhouse. Because everyone blamed Elmer for having to stay late, he decided it would be wise to let them leave school first. He took a good look around before stepping out from behind the door. Alone at last, he said to himself and started down the path. See, there's there's nothing to worry about. Want a bet, came the thundering reply. Drake sprang from his hiding place, his fist raised for a fight. Elmer had no time to think. He made a break towards home, running harder than he'd ever run before, with Drake chasing his every step. They jumped over fallen trees, splashed through puddles, crashed through branches, and leaped across a stream. Elmer was so frightened that he couldn't catch his breath. Not when he reached his house, not when he got to his room, not even when he locked the door and hid under his bed. Even then, alone in the dark, there was no peace for Elmer. He ran away instead of fighting, Papa bellowed. He was being chased, Mama argued back. Well, in a few weeks, we'll all fly south for the winter. It'll be every duck for himself. Only the strong will survive. Well, if you'd stop thinking like a sneaker commercial, you'd see that Elmer is just as strong as any other duckling. Elmer is a sissy. Elmer is your son, Mama pleaded. He's no son of mine, declared Papa. Poor Elmer heard his father's words and his heart crumbled to pieces. What do you do when your own Papa calls you names? Elmer didn't want to make his mama unhappy or his papa angry anymore. He filled a pillowcase with his paints and tools and a picture of his parents. He tied up the bundle and carried it away into the night. The forest was dark and silent. Elmer was relieved that there was no one around to see his tears when he slipped into the great pond and swam away from home. Elmer stepped into the opposite shore and looked around. He found an old hollow tree hidden deep in the forest. No one will ever find me here, he thought. Just as Elmer had made his own toys, he now used his special talents to make his new home. He built a comfy bed and a warm fireplace and a door to protect him from the chilly winds. Well, my house has everything I could ever want, he boasted. Everything except my mama and papa. The grass turned white with the first frost of winter. Elmer knew he would soon be the only duck left in the forest. His heart ached to see his parents once more before they flew south. As quietly as he could, he paddled back across the great pond and arrived just in time to see his flock readying for their journey. Oh, we, we can't go without Elmer, he heard his mama cry. Well, we can't stay here, Papa replied. If only I knew he was all right. Elmer whispered to himself from his hiding place, I'm all right, Mama. The flock took to the sky and Elmer waved goodbye. Just then, a shot rang out, shattering the cold. Hunters leaped from behind trees, their guns blasting. The ducks screeched in fright, struggling to fly fast and high as they could. Shot after shot tore through the air and ducks fell like autumn leaves from the sky. Elmer breathed easier when he saw most of the flock escape into the clouds. But then he realized that the hunters and their dogs would be coming. He was about to hide in the pond when he stopped, stopped by the sound of a quiet moan. Terrified as he was, Elmer followed the sound. 
He parted the tall grass, and there, to his astonishment, he found his wounded papa. Fly away, Elmer, papa pleaded. You don't see any of their ducks coming back to rescue me. For once in your life, can't you act like a normal duck, he argued. Forget me and save yourself, as what every other duck would do. With all his strength, Elmer lifted the old duck and carried him to the safety of the pond. May not have been what any other duck would do, but Elmer knew in his heart that it was the right thing to do. Papa was completely confused when he awoke. Where, where am I? He quacked. Don't worry, you're with me, Elmer answered, bringing a bowl of hot mushroom soup for his papa to eat. The old duck looked around at the wonderful home. You, you did this all by yourself? But then he remembered what had happened. You, you must leave me here and fly south. No duck has ever survived a winter in the forest. Save yourself, son, please. Elmer answered calmly. You've been sleeping for a long time, Papa. It's too late to leave. He opened the door so that Papa Duck could see the deep snow that covered the forest. Oh, son, what have I done to you? Don't worry, Papa, Elmer chided. We're going to have fun. And he was right. All winter long, they played games and told jokes and made things and laughed and talked and got to know each other. It was on a warm, cloudless morning that the sky exploded with the sounds of honking and flapping. Spring had come and the ducks were returning home. They gathered in the large field to gave, give thanks for the safe journey. As the newly elected leader of the flock, Drake Duckling asked for a moment of silence to remember all their fellow ducks who had not made it through the winter. And let's not forget the one shot by the hunters last fall. And Elmer, Mama cried out. Don't forget, we lost Elmer too. <laughs> now who could forget Elmer? Duck chuckled, that little sissy. The other ducks joined in the laughter until a voice boomed forth. If Elmer's a sissy, then I wish I were a sissy too. Drake angrily demanded, who, who said that? To everyone's shock, Papa stepped forward. Papa! It was impossible. No duck had ever survived a winter in the forest. Not one, not ever, never. But Mama ran to embrace Papa as the other ducks wondered, how? Elmer was so engrossed in the cooking a pot of dandelion stew that he never even knew his mama was there until she said, are you too grown up to give me a kiss? Elmo cried with joy and hugged her. I always knew you were special, she whispered to him, and now everyone else knows too. I'm so proud of you. The entire flock cheered when Elmer stepped from his home. One by one, each duck congratulated him for his bravery and loyalty and ingenuity. Drake Duckling sheepishly kicked the dirt with his webbed feet. He didn't know what to say except for, way to go, Elmer, and he offered his wing for a high five. Elmer took a deep breath and then spoke his mind. I want to make one thing perfectly clear. I am the same duck I have always been. I have not changed. I am a big sissy, and I am proud of it. Drake took a step forward. Well, you, you haven't changed, but maybe I, I have. Again, he offered his wing, and this time Elmer slapped it hard as the flock rushed to surround their hero. Over the years, Elmer learned that he was not so very different after all. Out in the world, he met lots of other ducks just like himself. No, Elmer was not so different, but he always did remain special. All right, friends, now we are going to sing Five Little Ducks, which is a great song because it introduces the concept of subtraction. Talking about math and numbers is really important in the early years. It helps develop those early literacy skills. So let's count to make sure we have all five little ducks. One, two, three, four, five, plus the mommy duck, which makes Six. All right, are you ready? Five little ducks went out one day Over the hills and far away When the mommy duck said quack, 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 quack Only four little ducks came 
coming back. back. Uh oh. One, two, three, four. Plus, mommy makes five, but there's only four little ones. <gasps> four little ducks went out one day over the hills and far away when the mommy duck said quack, 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 quack. Only three little ducks came back. Oh dear! One, two, three little ducks plus the mommy duck. So we have four ducks all together, but only three little ones. Three little ducks went out one day over the hills and far away when the mommy duck said quack, 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 quack. Only two little ducks came back. Oh dear, one, two little ducks plus the mommy duck makes three all together, but two little ones. Two little ducks went out one day over the hills and far away when the mommy duck said quack, 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 quack. Only one little duck came back. Oh dear, there's only one baby duck. Oh no. Plus the mommy. Oh dear. Two ducks all together, but one last little one. One little duck went out one day over the hills and far away when the mommy duck said quack, 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 quack. No little ducks came wandering back. Oh dear. Zero babies, but only one mom. That's right. So now we have a sad mommy duck. Can you make a sad mommy duck? Sad mommy duck went out one day over the hills and far away when the mommy duck said quack 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 all five little ducks came back so let's put them back we have one two oh my goodness three four we're missing a duck we're missing a duck, Karina. Oh, no! <laughs> Get the other duck, Karina. Quack, 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 quack. Five. <laughs> so we have one, two, three, four, five little ducks plus the mommy. Uh oh. Now we just have five little ducks. What happened to the mommy? Can you bring her back, please? Baby duck's gonna come out. Quack, all together. quack, quack. All together. Quack, quack, quack. And there is mommy duck, which makes six ducks <laughs> all together. <laughs> all right, friends, I hope you've enjoyed our story time. We have a fun and easy craft that you can do at home. Now, I should say that this craft we've featured before, so you might have already made one, but it doesn't hurt to make another one. So our craft idea today is a paper book. All you need to do this is a piece of paper, some scissors, and then something to draw with. So you're gonna take your paper, hold it this way, you're gonna fold it in half and press down to make a good crease. You're gonna fold it in half again, and then you're gonna fold it in half the other way. Open it up, find where the fold is, Use your scissors to cut in that middle line, just right there, bloop, bloop, bloop. And then the trickiest part is opening it up oh. <laughs> and finding that hole, squishing it, and folding it flat. And then you can decorate your book however you want. Karina, would you like to show them your book? So we did some. Nice letters and stickers. Oh, I see. Your book can be about anything you would like it to be. All right, friends, if you make a book, we would love to see pictures of it. You can post it as a comment on this video, email it to pleasanthills at einetwork.net, or add it to our special face group, Facebook group, Pleasant Hills Library Virtual Programming. Now, before we leave today, it's time for our goodbye song. May I have a hug, Karina? Sure. All right, let's sing. Mm -hmm. 
The more we get together, 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 the more we get together, the happier we'll be. For your friends are my friends, and my friends are your friends. The more we get together, the happier we'll be. <laughs> Bye, friends!